we will now encounter L'Hopital's rule. It will allow us to compute many limits we need to compute, which, which we cannot compute with the rules we learned up to now. We will learn the rule and its conditions and apply it also to some examples straight away. And we will also see why the rule works. So what is L'Hopital's rule? L'Hopital's rule works for quotients of functions. Suppose we have two functions f and g and they have to be differentiable uh, on some open interval i and the limit point a has to be inside this uh, interval i. So we have to, we need to have some nice functions, you have to be able to differentiate them. Well, I think almost all functions will satisfy those properties. Furthermore, uh, we are going to divide by g, so g prime of x is not allowed to be zero except possibly at a. So in your interval we have a g prime of x and we are going to divide by it so it's not allowed to be zero. So that's a condition for it to work. And suppose now that either both limits of f and g are zero, so that's the case in which Robitaux's rule work, both limits are zero or both limits are plus or minus infinity. In that case the limit of x to, uh, x to a of f divided by g can be replaced by the limit x to f f prime divided by g prime. Ah, that seems quite odd. So you have one limit and you replace it by another limit, and the second limit is usually easier. But remember, this only works if the limits of f and g are either both zero or both infinity. So if you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Of course, it's nice that we have a rule for especially those cases, because those cases are the determinant cases which we didn't know. Let us see how L'Hopital's rule works in an example. Suppose we have the limit of x to 0 of sine x over x. So our f of x equals sine x, g of x equals x, x goes to 0. Well, f and g are differentiable, no problem with that. And uh, sine of 0 equals 0, and uh, if x equals 0, x equals 0, of course. So we have a 0 over 0 case here. So the conditions are satisfied. Then we know that this limit x to 0 of f over g equals limit x to 0 of f prime over g prime equals uh, cosine x over 1. And now the indeterminacy has been removed and we can just apply uh, uh, any rule we like, plug x equals 0 in immediately and we get 1, as we knew already. So we see that L'Hopital's rule allows us to compute some limits very fast. Some similar, something similar happened for the ln of x of x minus 1. If you plug in x equals 1 straight away, we get the ln of 1 over 0. ln of 1 uh, is also 0, so we get 0 over 0. So we can try to apply L'Hopital's rule, uh, the derivative of the ln of x equals 1 over x, uh, the derivative of x minus 1 equals 1, so we get a new limit, 1 over x over 1, x to 1 is just 1. And then finally, in infinity over infinity case, e to the power x over x, e to the power x blows up, x blows up if x goes to infinity, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule, we have get a new limit, limit x to infinity, to the derivative of the numerator, well, it stays the same, divided by the derivative of the uh, denominator, that becomes easier, becomes a 1, so we get limit x to infinity over e to the power x, blows up, goes to infinity. So here we see a few examples where L'Hopital's rule works very, very fast. Now, why does it work? Let's look at the 0 over 0 in a special case. And what special case exactly? Well, we want f and g, f prime and g prime to be continuous, so not only f and g differentiable but continuously differentiable, and furthermore we require g prime of a to be non-zero. L'Hopital's rule works in the general case, but it's much easier to show why it works in this case. So let's do it this case, and we'll leave the more general case for the textbook. So why does it work? Well, if you take limit x to a of f prime over g prime, then first we use the continuity. So we can take the limits in, so we get a f prime over g prime, and we use the uh, fact that g prime of a is not equal to zero. So we use the both conditions. And then we are set to go, we can use a quotient rule, the de definition of f prime, definition of g prime, fx minus uh, fa divided by x minus a for x to a. And uh, uh, then we use the quotient rule, take the limit out, uh, cancel factors x minus a, 
So we get this limit over here. And then we use the fact that we had a zero over zero case. So f of a equals zero, g of a equals zero. So we can cancel those factors out. And we get our limit x to f, f over g. And then we see, why well, our limit x to f prime over g prime equals our limit uh, of f over g. In this special case with those conditions. We can do some trick for the infinity over infinity case as well. Uh, there we need our limit L to be non-zero. And then we have uh, limit x to a of f over g. Uh, well, we have infinity over infinity. I only know something about zero over zero, but I can turn zero over zero in infinity. Sorry, I can turn infinity over infinity into zero over zero by noting that f equals one over one over f. So that's over here. And one over g in the numerator. And then we have a 1 over g divided by 1 over f, g to infinity and f to infinity, so we have something of the form 0 over 0. So we can use L'Hopital's rule, then we get the minus 1 over g squared times g prime divided by minus 1 over f squared times f prime, which simplifies to f prime over g prime uh, times uh, f squared over g squared times limit uh, g prime over f prime. Well, the f squared over g squared yields l squared in the limit. So what do we get? If our l equals our l squared times some limit, so our limit has to be equal to 1 over l. And then assuming that uh, l is non-zero, we can turn it around and we get limit x to a of f prime over g prime equals limit x to a equals f over g equals our l over here. So that's kind of an idea why this works in the infinity over infinity case. So now you know what L'Hopital rule, L'Hopital's rule is. I've seen a few examples when it works. I also have some ideas, some special cases why the rule works.